cardiomyopathy is something that is it's really very simple and it's not even really tested that often. It will be something that you'll see during your nursing practice. It will be something you do see on exams, but let's briefly talk about it really quick and we'll, we'll get through it really fast. First, pathy. So pathy means, uh, it's basically Greek, it means suffer from disease, okay? Myo, we know as muscle, and cardio, obviously heart. So heart muscle disease, right? So this is basically, obviously, this is just a, a disorder of the heart muscles, okay? So if you look at this picture here, this is a left ventricle. And you can look how thick this muscle is. So this thickening of this muscle, of this left ventricle, is basically one of the forms, really, of, of cardiomyopathy. Okay, it's that thickening of that vessel, of the, well, of the, of the muscle, which, as we're going to talk about, is going to lead to uh, decreased cardiac function. So basically, abnormal, it's an abnormality of the heart muscle leading to functional changes. Okay, as, as the muscle, we'll talk about here's there's three different kinds. First is dilated. With dilated uh, cardiomyopathy, what happens is all four chambers enlarge. Okay, so the chambers will enlarge. Here, let's say here's our normal heart. And what happens with dilated cardiomyopathy is the chambers enlarge. And as they enlarge, uh, we still have the same volume in our system, so as we enlarge, they're not able to get the same cardiac output out. And because they're so much bigger, our contractility is going to be decreased as well. With hypotrophic cardiomyopathy, what happens, that's kind of like that picture we just looked at. Um, it's progressive thickening of this muscle, of the ventricular muscle, and that's going to also lead to um, decreased cardiac output. Now that might seem a little bit counterintuitive, right? Because we, as we get a bigger muscle, we should be able to pump more, right? Well, what happens is, let's say here's our normal ventricular muscle, right? What happens with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the muscle gets so much bigger, and as you'll notice here, as that muscle got bigger, look, we lost all this space for filling. So because of the, the increasing size and thickening of this ventricular muscle, we have less ability to fill. And with less filling, with less preload, What's going to happen with less preload? We're going to have less cardiac output, okay? Restrictive. So with restrictive cardiomyopathy, this is the right, or sorry, rigid ventricular walls do not stretch. So kind of think of this as like atherosclerosis. So these become really rigid, and so they don't stretch during filling. And again, our ventricles are supposed to stretch. As our atria push and squeeze their blood into the ventricles, there should be some stretch here to allow for complete filling, right? Now, with this restrictive cardiomyopathy, what happens is these ventricles are not going to stretch. They become really hard, and this, le again, leads to decreased stroke volume, decreased cardiac output, um, and can lead to heart failure, okay? So let's look again at pictures of these really quick. Here's our normal heart with dilated. Look how much bigger this ventricle has become, okay? With hypertrophic, you can see the thickening of this wall here. And with restrictive, this kind of picture is trying to show that the atria is trying to fill the ventricle and the ventricle is not allowing for any stretch. Okay, so those are the three kinds. Dilated, hypertrophic, and restrictive. Okay, so what's our assessment with this gonna be? Well, our assessment, just if, if you really kind of go back and watch the heart failure lecture, what our assessment is gonna be very similar to heart failure. We're gonna have uh, fatigue and dyspnea, Right? Why? Because we have decreased cardiac output, well, decreased stroke volume, leading to decre decreased cardiac output, which is going to decrease our delivery of oxygen, and that's going to lead to fatigue. We can also develop dys dysrhythmias, and um, we're going to develop extra heart sounds. So we know our S1, S2, our normal heart sounds. With uh, cardiomyopathy, what's going to happen is we're going to get that S3, that S4. Okay? So what's some of the treatment? Most of the treatment with cardiomyopathy is going to be more supportive, okay? And when we basically say supportive treatment, what that means is we're not going to fix it, we're not going to cure it. All we're going to be able to do is just try to help the patient be a little bit more comfortable and, uh, and help just a tad bit. So some of the things, though, that we are going to do for this is going to be very similar to our, again, our heart failure treatments, right? So basically, they are, I mean, our heart is failing because these ventricles do not comply. 
we become we go into a state of basically heart failure, right? So, but one of the things we can give is beta blockers, beta adrenergic blockers, um, and these are going to de decrease the contractile force, the workload, and the oxygen demand. Okay, so as we do those three things, what basically can happen here is, is our heart is able to relax a little bit. Um, it's not going to require as much oxygen. It's not going to require. Um, it's not going to have to. It's not going to be trying to squeeze as much, which will then lead to this decreased O2 demand, and that's going to be again. It's going to be supportive in uh, in uh, cardiomyopathy. It's not going to cure it at all. Uh, we're also going to want to encourage rest for our patients. These patients, again, they're going to be very fatigued and, and have dyspnea due to this decreased output. And so encouraging rest, scheduling activities, um, bundling activities, bundling care so they're not just exhausted all the time. We're also going to want to treat hypertension. Uh, a lot of these patients are going to end up with hypertension. And so we'll treat hypertension with the regular things. You know, we can do DASH diet. Uh, we can give our ACE inhibitors. We give our ARBs, et cetera. One last thing that we can do is ventricular assistive devices. Not a very common um, treatment, but what ventricular assistive devices are going to do, right? So with cardiomyopathy, basically our ventricles are just not working, right? So what we can do with ventricular assistive devices is they're going to actually help the ventricles squeeze and help the ventricles um, get the blood out of the system, okay? So that's kind of the, the therapies, the different treatments that we're going to do with these patients. Again, like I said, it's not an overly complicated issue, but if you think about what's happening and you have a good understanding of heart failure and you also have a good understanding of uh, hemodynamics, basic hemodynamics, cardiomyopathy becomes very simple if you just know the three different kinds, right? Um, dilated, restrictive, and hypertrophic, okay? And what the different kinds are and then realize kind of our, our treatments are more supportive, similar to heart failure, okay? 